All right, we are here for Small Business Quick Wins presented by Thrive, and we got a great guest today. We have Kenny Lang, and he is from Kenny Lang Coaching, which works out really well because it'd be awkward if it wasn't him. And you know, sometimes you hear about coaches or organizational coaches like, oh, great, what am I going to really get out of this? This is going to be some high-level nonsense. That's not what's happening. Kenny is awesome at this stuff specifically for small businesses and small business owners so after we get into who kenny is we're going to get into some tactics and things that are really going to transform the way that you're running your business and growing your business so kenny welcome to small business quick wins how are you and who are you jay thanks so much for having me uh so i am i'm doing well uh it's it's friday it's awesome i'm, I'm gonna play soccer tomorrow um so I'm, I'm thrilled about that um hopefully i won't feel my age while i'm out there but who i am is uh I, as you said i'm a coach um i love working with small businesses i'm this is my second business to run um i empathize with the the passion the drive the energy the hard work the stress and anxiety um, that come with that. And I, I want to help those small business owners win and turn their purpose into performance. Um, and I do that in a couple different ways, which I know that we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. And, and, I, and you know, I, I know companies that Kenny has helped and he really has transformed their businesses. So I'm excited to dig into this with him. So let me ask you this. I want to talk about, you said something when we were discussing before the show that a CEO is not just a chief executive officer, they are a chief everything officer like what did you mean when you said that so that means that uh, if we were to design your org chart um and you your name would probably be written in most of the seats um you are marketing you are selling you are delivering the services you're ideating uh you are filing taxes payroll and taking out the trash Right. So if it's uh it goes back to the old saying of if it's meant to be it's up to me is the way that it feels oftentimes in the early days. And in, even after you get going and get a few team members, it can still feel like the success of the company depends solely on you. And, and that's, you know, a stressful and, and oftentimes unhealthy place to be. Okay. I feel that I really do. Um, and it's not like an ego thing. If you're a business mm -hmm. owner, um, you do feel like if you just had the time to do every single role in every single position in the company, the company would do better, but mm -hmm. you can't do every role, right? You can't do every role because right. there's not five of you. So what is like that initial thing that you can tell small business owners about breaking free from that and, and how it will explode the growth of your business? Yeah. So one of the first things uh, when talking to small business owners that I'll tell them to do is number one, you need to actually lay out how many seats you're sitting in. Um, they all feel tangled up in your head. And, and so long as it stays there, that's the way it's going to actually be. So when we break out uh, a, an org chart and we really look at what are all the functions that you need to be successful over the next six to 12 months, right? So let's, let's be forward looking. Let's write your name in as many of these seats as you're actually sitting in, and maybe all of them, maybe 90% or 80% of them. And now we actually have a map of where do we need to back you out of until eventually at some point in your business, you're just sitting in the top in that visionary CEO seat. And it really will mean chief executive officer. So when you back yourself out, okay, mm -hmm. let's say I owned an HVAC company. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to grow this business up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in, you know, a second in command or whatever, because I just can't do everything. And now I'm backing myself out of some of these roles. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm watching that person do the role. And I'm like, there that's not how I would do it. I would go in there and I would do All this. Right. And I would, like, so do you have to hold yourself back or can you jump back in? I mean, what is the right way? Well, I, I would say some of it, it depends, which is a terrible answer. But for the most part, if you design a seat really well, the function, um, absent of any people, um, but what is the ideal function and, and how should it look? then it makes things very easy. Now, when designing a seat, there are three key components. One is the mission, two are the responsibilities, three are the KPIs. The mission of it is the outcome you're delegating, 
right? So often uh, when we're small business owners, we're thinking in terms of tasks and processes. And it's like, you got to do this, you got to do this, got to do this. And this is my next thing because you're ruled by your calendar and your checklist. But really, you're delegating an outcome that you want them to produce. You're not hiring a salesperson to make sales calls. You're hiring them to generate and close deals that lead to increased revenue, right? So articulate that and then think, well, if somebody has that outcome, what are the processes or responsibilities that they would need to have ownership for? And don't list 17 of them. You know, some people go and say, well, what are all the things I do? And they write like a 10 page document and that's not helpful to anyone. So make it four or five and then finally go, how will this person know that they're winning and how will I know that they're winning? Cause I don't want to be a micromanager. Most founders and owners have zero appetite to be a micromanager. They want to keep moving at breakneck speed. So write out key performance indicators. What are the activities every week that if they did them and hit these targets, so doing the right things and doing them right regularly is likely to produce that outcome that you want to see from them. If you do that and set those things up, it's clear to them so they won't get so frustrated and it becomes clear to you or any other employees that you have. And now you all feel like, hey, you've got your section. I've got my section of responsibilities. Let's work together to move this thing forward. So I, I need to aspire to not being a micromanager. Uh, because I am definitely a micromanager and I'm, a, at least I'm aware of it. I feel like that's step one, right? Yeah. But I like what you're saying in terms of laying out, you know, on a weekly basis, this is what is a win in my eyes. And, and if you do this, then you are winning. Mm -hmm. It's great. But how often, like, what is the, do you sit down with somebody at, like once a year or how often do you actually sit down with somebody that you've put in that seat to see if they're living up to the expectations that you had for them? Right. So getting into the, the rhythms and the cadence of a business, right? And there's a lot of benefits to not doing this on just an ad hoc or when there's a fire burning, right? Is really having a strategic plan. So there's a couple different ways. Number one, as you are bringing people in, you need to have something in, in my world. And according to the system and soul framework I use with the organizations, we call it a weekly sync. So we're going to check in, talk about like, how are we living core values? But then we're going to get into the, the KPIs of, did you hit the targets? If you're a salesperson and you're supposed to make 50 calls this week and you made 10, we have an issue. We're going to talk about it. Did something happen? Were you out for those five days? Whatever it is. But if there's a pattern, we need to address it before it becomes a problem, which is why meeting only when there's a problem or a couple times a year usually doesn't work out too well. It's too late by that point. So there's that weekly sync where you all come together in terms of developing somebody and making sure that they have the right um, sort of soft skills, the, the, um, the emotional support, the head support. And I know some leaders are going to think, well, who cares about that? I don't need that. I'm just getting stuff done. Yeah, it's your business and you have an intrinsic and internal motivation and you always will, but you're it's not your your people's company. They're never going to care about it as much as you do. And they sh they likely shouldn't. And that's a burden don't, that you shouldn't put on them. And that's a tip for free. But meet with them every other week for 15 or 30 minutes. How are you doing? What are you working on? How could I help? Right? They feel seen. They feel heard. They feel supported. That's when you start to build psychological safety in an organization. And I, I know that's, that's like a, a $7 word. But it is the bedrock of high performance teams. And that, that's been studied by, by Google and, and all sorts of other companies have documented this. But when you do that, they release what is called discretionary effort. And that's what most business owners are looking for, is they're not looking for somebody to punch a clock and do the bare minimum and go home. They're not wired that way. They don't want people around them that are wired that way. What you want is all of that extra effort doesn't mean that they're going to work, you know, 80 hours a week for you, but it does mean while they are there, they are going to give everything they have. They're going to problem solve. They're not going to say, that's not my problem. They're not going to just leave something undone because you wouldn't. That's when they actually start to work like you would if you were still in that position. And then quarterly, talk about your line to our values. Are you helping our culture or hurting it? It's binary. So there, there's no, there's no middle ground. And then are they a fit for their seat? 
are they really in the best position possible based on their their gifts and what energizes them, how much impact they can make, and the right time in their career, right? Like you wouldn't put a, a fresh graduate from a college that just got their CPA and make them the CFO of a Fortune 500 company. That'd be stupid. Maybe eventually they'll be there, but you got to get that timing right as well. And you review that sort of stuff quarterly. I got to tell you, I think your advice about checking in weekly, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, it's so valuable. And I think a lot of business owners think, well, do I really need to do that? I know what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. I have an idea of what they're up to. But I don't think enough business owners realize that, yeah, you'll get a lot out of it as the business owner. But the the person that's working for you, what, what it is for them is the opportunity to share with you what they're doing, but also know that... Uh, their efforts are being seen. And mm -hmm. so that way, if they do work harder and they're doing innovative things or they're or trying to improve processes or whatever, that you're going to know about it directly from them. And mm -hmm. then to your point, I love that idea of discretionary effort. Uh, they're going to push even harder because they know they're going to have the opportunity to, to share that with you. And so mm -hmm. it's, a, it, listen, I'll be straight up. It could be annoying to talk to, depending on how many people you have ongoing every single week, but right. this should be a priority, right? This should be something you make sure you do every week. A absolutely. Because it, it, it can and, and sometimes will feel like a waste of time, power through it. But if 15 minutes or 30 minutes of somebody, and let's just assume this, you've hired this person to work 40 hours a week. I know 40 hours a week is a pipe dream, but if you could take 15 to 30 minutes to supercharge the other 39 and a half hours of their work, that's a really good return on investment and a return yes. on your time, which probably feels like the smallest resource that you have time. I love it. But that. if you do that, now you can grow by multiplication, not addition. You're not dragging anybody. You are having 10 people or five people or even three people that can push much harder collectively than you can by yourself. I think that is a great thing for people to think of small business owners think about 15 minutes to supercharge 39 and a half hours of somebody that works for you week. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So you've given a lot of great advice here, but I want to pivot. All right. To the, to the last segment of this thing, which is I want to know if you've ever gotten epically horrible advice we don't have to say anybody's name who gave it to you but what is it could be life advice it could be business advice i'll give you an example like somebody told me that i should i'll never forget this they said to me the key to success in business is to be the first person that's at work and then the last person to leave every day no matter what and i tried doing that for the first year of my working life and i thought i was going to kill over and die and i turned right. out you could you're going to do all this stuff be there all day and do nothing so that was the worst advice. What what's some bad advice you you've received? Um, the one I think I've received quite a lot. Um, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, but the one that I got and it was right before I started um, my first company, which was a, a digital marketing agency, HubSpot partner sort of thing um, that that I, I built and sold. At the very beginning, I was getting advice from a few people saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm going to build websites, SEO. It's It was 2015. So, I mean, it was really like hitting on all cylinders. And I had somebody who started multiple organizations and um, very experienced, uh, former like Marine. I was like, all right, so he's had leadership training, all this stuff. And he said, yeah, I don't know if, I don't think you should do that. I just, I don't, I think the, the market is going to be too tough for and people aren't really going to be interested in, in paying for that or, or something like that. And I was like, wow. Like, and I really respected his opinion. He, he had been a, a sort of on again, off again, mentor of mine. And he told me that, and it just deflated me for, for a bit. Uh, but I was hungry and so was my family. <laughs> so, um, I went ahead and, you know, was able to make it to five years and, uh, sold it and got acquired and, and, and went on from there. Um, but that, that was to me, was like one, I don't think you understand the market and right. two, 
if anybody tells me that I can't do something, it motivates me that much more to prove right. them wrong. So maybe oh, he really helped me. Maybe perfect. maybe he was doing a whole reverse psychology thing oh, on yeah. me, and that's what <laughs> propelled me to success. And I need to thank him. Yeah, I don't know if that's what he was doing, but I, I I I like the motivation you took from that. And I do think in general, people have to be a little careful with the advice that they give if it's not a sector that they are are deep in, because they'll leave that conversation not thinking about it again, and they'll leave shrapnel behind that. Like, oh my god, uh, you know, mm -hmm. people are reacting to that. So that advice is horrendous. Um, all right. So before we wrap up here, Kenny, how does everybody get involved in your world? Where should they follow you? What should they do? Yeah. So a couple different ways. Number one, come find me on LinkedIn. So I'm, I'm posting, I've challenged myself this year to post, uh, Monday through Friday. So, um, please forgive if some of them are just total crap. No, um, but come, come check that out. Come follow me, connect with me. I'm on there all the time. So it's a great way for me to, to engage in, in one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, my website, Kenny Lang, L A N G E.com. And then I also have a, a podcast, uh, called how leaders think, um, where we don't talk about what to do, but how to think so that you can figure it out for yourself. Um, and then finally, I've just released, uh, and I know this is coming out in a couple of weeks, but uh, I've just released a free workshop to help small business owners and organizations find focus for the next 90 days. I guarantee you, you're going to feel like you built something really impressive um, at the end of, of 90 days. And that's love that. We're, we're going to put that all in the show notes, every single link. Uh, definitely go follow Kenny. He's a great follow on LinkedIn. And Kenny, I want to thank you for being here. And I want to thank you all for being uh, here for Small Business Quick Wins presented by Thrive. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you. All right.